Interest rates remain stubbornly low. Markets are volatile. Inflation is high. And everybody knows that if you're going to invest, you should consider that money to be put away for at least four or five years. So what do you do if you want to make the best of your money that you're going to need in the short term? Let's find out. Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete Matthew. I'm a chartered financial planner based here in the UK and I've been putting up videos on YouTube for more than 10 years, giving you everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. By the way, did you know that every week I send out a digest email with loads of helpful stuff for you to move forward with your finances and every week I ask the audience what videos I should be making and each week they vote. This video has been requested by the readers of the Meaningful Digest. So if you want to have an input into the videos we're making, join the Digest over at MeaningfulMoney.tv. Just add your details into the box at the top of the page. Now, I'm old enough to remember when you could get a 7% return in the bank. These days, you're lucky to get a tenth of that. And prolonged low interest rates combined with higher inflation now are a pretty grim combination. So we're gonna to need to consider alternatives to just keeping money in a simple easy access account. And we're gonna to need to try and eke out as much return as we can. Now remember, as we're going through this, if it's helpful, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps to get these videos in front of as many people as possible. So thank you. Now, as with most questions of finance, you have to decide what is the point of the money that we're thinking about here, this short term money. When people ask me this question, it's usually money that they're thinking of using in the short term. And I call that a cash event. It's when you might need to hand over your money for a service, a product, or some other transaction, maybe even your tax bill. So with that in mind, is it more important that the money grows between now and whenever you need it? Or is it more important that it is there no matter what? If you're going to invest money that you're going to need soon, and it falls in value right when you need it, are you going to be able to postpone whatever it is you needed the money for? I mean, if it's for a house deposit and now it turns out you can't buy the house that you've fallen in love with because you don't have enough deposit, that would be rough, right? And if it's for a tax bill, then you could even be in trouble. Now, inflation is a factor in all this, of course, but less so over the shorter timescales. Beating inflation is why we invest at all. It's to make sure that our money grows in real terms so that we have more of it to spend in the future. But inflation isn't such a big deal over very short time scales of maybe a year or 18 months, though it is still a factor. So we have to weigh up the opportunity cost of the money not being there when we need it, because markets have moved against us. And we have to weigh that against the worrying feeling that maybe our money isn't being put to best use and it's being eroded while it sits there. Which of those we're comfortable with will be a factor in the decisions that we make. Really important to remember that as we look at this. So let's look at what we could be doing with the money. And the first option is to keep your money with the bank, but it allow them to lock it up for a bit. So if you have no need for the money for a year, say, you could get a better rate than you would get on an easy access account. Right now, in February 2022, here in the UK, you can get 0.6% on an easy access account, but more than twice that, 1.3% on a one-year fixed term account. Lock the money up for three years and you could get up to 1.85%. Certainly nothing to throw a party about, but better than just leaving the money in an online saver earning you nothing. You can save yourself the hassle of shopping around for the best rates by using one of the new savings platforms. Now, the best known of these is Hargreaves Lansdowne and their active savings product, but there are others available such as Acone and Raisin. Why did they call it Raisin? Maybe so people like me would talk about it. These services do the legwork of finding decent interest rates for you. You might not get the absolute best rates available, but it will be pretty close. And you might think that that difference is a small price to pay for not having to go through the hassle of opening accounts with lots of different banks. So you open a savings platform account and you tell them how long you're prepared to lock money over and how much you're talking about. And then they will distribute the money over the best accounts that work for you. And if you have a large amount, they can even bear in mind the FSCS compensation limits. I did a video on that a couple of weeks ago, so I'll put a link to that up there and in the description. And savings platforms are just a textbook example of the internet meeting a need 
that many of us have, and I love that. What a great time to be alive. Now, what about premium bonds? Premium bonds are another option for short-term money, and these are offered by the UK government through the National Savings and Investments brand, NSNI. Because they are government-backed, they are guaranteed risk-free. The maximum you can hold is £50,000 per person, and each month, your bond numbers are entered into a draw to win prizes, anywhere from £25 up to a million pounds. And the total prize fund is about 1% of the money held across all the bonds each year. Now, firstly, don't hold out for winning the big one. For comparison, the odds of being struck by lightning, and I can only find data for the US on this, the odds are about one in 500,000. Now, I'm not good at probability maths, but even I know that you are significantly more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to win the premium bonds. But even with average luck, you're likely to win nothing at all. So arguably, you're better off keeping the money in a fixed term savings account or one of the savings platforms. It used to be the case that the tax-free nature of premium bonds was an advantage, but with the first thousand pounds of interest being tax-free for a basic rate taxpayer in any bank account anyway, it's just not a differentiator anymore. And yet weirdly, despite all these reasons not to hold them, everybody I've met who has premium bonds really likes them. They're a bit of fun. It's kind of like a lottery where you keep your stake. So maybe they are an option after all. And really that's it for risk-free options for short-term money. So maybe we do need to consider a very small element of risk for some of the money we've put aside. Let's call this a blended approach. So you could, for example, opt for keeping some money in a fixed term deposit or with a savings platform, and then invest a portion of it in a low risk fund. Now I'm gonna use Vanguard's Life Strategy 20% Equity Fund as an example. It's not a recommendation, folks. Other funds are available. Do your own research, etc., etc. Over the past 10 years, that fund's biggest peak to trough fall was at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, when it fell over 9%. It bounced back pretty quickly, like most funds did, but still, if you needed your money in April 2020 and you were invested in that fund, you'd be feeling pretty sick. That fund's average calendar year return over the past 10 years has been over 5% per year. But averages do hide short-term volatility. And of course, there's no guarantee at all that future returns will be the same as past returns. And that's particularly true, I think, in a high inflation environment, such as we're experiencing right now, because so-called low-risk funds often hold a lot of bonds, and these can be hurt by inflation. But you could perhaps take the total sum of money that you're thinking about right now and decide to just put a portion of it into a low-risk fund like that, and then maybe leave the rest in a fixed-term deposit. But if you do invest a portion of the money and leave the rest in a fixed-term deposit, chances are that you'll do okay on the invested portion. And if you do lose out, then at least it'll be restricted to that portion. You're gonna to need to be happy that you may end up with less than you put in, and you may then have to defer whatever it is you were gonna be using the money for to allow the fund to recover. Maybe if you do well early on, you could bank your profits and call it a day. Maybe you could sell out of the invested portion over time as you get near to your cash event deadline to reduce the chance of a market shock just as you need the money. Some food for thought, hopefully. But I think to eke out as much return as you can on short-term money, you're gonna to need to be pretty hands-on and do the work to maximize your returns. You're also gonna to need to accept that if you put any of the money at risk to try and do better, that risk might not pay off. So consider ahead of time what the implications of that might be and how you might minimize the effects. Whatever you decide to do, own the decision. Either accept that you're not gonna get much return, but at least the money is still there, or you're gonna risk a little bit to try and get a little bit more return, but the risk might not pay off, and then you'll have to live with the consequences. That is the adult approach to managing our finances after all. Okay, folks, I hope that was useful. If it was, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I wanna help you win with money over the longer term. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.